designation of oddity. The oddity found and that which number 10 saloon is to be designated URU C413 until such a time as it is removed from its current location. Unlimiting risks. URU C413 is mostly at risk of public perception given the operation of the Confederate conspectors out of the nearby Bella Union Hotel. It is of utmost importance that the existence of URU C413 be kept from public cognizance. The owner of the number 10 saloon, a Mr. Bellum Natal, is neither friendly nor unfriendly to our presence, but is happy to give gamblers and drinkers in the establishment. Given this, we have placed Special Agents 1 and 2 and Deadwood to deny access to URU. 6413 on a daily basis, as Dr. Natal is aware of the dangerous nature of URU 6413, it is not expected that access to it during closing hours is likely. Of course, beyond the obfuscation of the oddity by our agents, it presents a natural danger to anyone who places a part of their body inside the opening. This is the primary behavior that should be prevented. The Oddity URU C413 is an interstitial opening approximately one and a half feet across in the western standing wall of the number 10 saloon of Deadwood in the Dakota Territory. When living matter of any kind is placed inside the oddity, the matter will be drawn strongly inwards. Material that passes the boundary of the oddity does not exit on the other side of the wall. The wall itself appears whole from the outside of the saloon, despite the opening being quite large and deeper than the wall's thickness. Objects that are too large to easily pass through the opening are not a barrier to the inward pull of the oddity. The discovery of the oddity took place when the co-owner of the saloon, John Manning, discovered the opening and placed his hand inside. Mr. Nattel reported that Mr. Manning was first firmly lodged up to his shoulder in the oddity for about two hours, during which time he complained of thirst and hunger. Mr. Nattel detailed a further offense to our agents. At first thought I heard of a great cracking, and I stand by that assumption, but there was with it a sort of sliding sound as Johnny started to flex like a balloon. He puffed up a bit and then deflated just as quickly. It was as if all the humors were drained directly from his body. He cried out, and I was tempted to take his free hand and give a mighty pull, but there was a scant time to speak, much less act. Johnny's body went limp as the rest of him, sins and all, went through the hole like medicine into the greedy mouth of the infirm. There was nothing left but some blood, claw marks on the wall, and a memory. I quick first brought to the wall and went to report the incident to the sheriff. The sheriff of Deadwood was friendly with our cause and contacted us quickly. The few suspicions of murder were quickly quelled, and the story of Mr. Manning's new life in San Francisco was disseminated. Additional Complication 1 a new complication has arisen in the form of Tom Miller. Mr. Miller, the owner of the Bella Union, has made several practical offers on Mr. Nuttell's establishment. Through his agent, Jack McCall, Mr. Nuttle does not appear to be eager to sell, as he has already turned down several generous offers from our own agents. Mr. Miller, however, is a known member of the Renegade Group known as the Confederate Inspectors. Our agents have made it clear that any offer by Mr. Miller will be matched and exceeded by ourselves. There is a small risk that Mr. Nadell uses this betting process to drive up the price of his establishment to unreasonable heights. They believe there is a fair chance that Mr. Miller or his associates will simply kill Mr. Nadell and seize the property in this case. Protection of Mr. Nadell is to be utilized to prevent this possibility. Additional Complication 2 Mr. McCall has become a frequent patron of the Number 10 Saloon since his offers of purchase were rebuffed. 
Agent One has ensured that he is seated next to the oddity during most of the saloon's open hours, with Agent Two acting as relief. This has prevented direct access to the oddity, but it appears that Mr. McCall, and likely the Confederate inspectors as a whole, are aware of the oddity. Mr. Nadell may have been using knowledge of the oddity to solicit a higher offer as previously suspected. Additional agents have been requested and are on the way, though it will be a week before they arrive. Though it is not known how the oddity would be weaponized or utilized to harm the Union directly, it is quite a bit more dangerous than most oddities, and must be kept out of Confederate hands at all costs. Telegrams received on August 2nd, 1876. New complications. Confederate Agent Jack McCarr has killed Agent One. While Bill Haycock was shot in the back of the head, request instruction on how to proceed. Silver Seth Bollock. Martha Jane Cannery has captured McCarr. Agent has refused to turn him over for arrest. Request instruction on how to proceed. Sheriff Seth Bullock. McCarr had been taken to the number 10 saloon. McCarr's hand has been placed in the oddity by cannery. Urgently request instruction on how to proceed. Sheriff Seth Bullock. New complication. McCarr had been killed by the oddity. Crowd horrified. Miss Cannery has been arrested. Request instruction on how to proceed. Extremely urgent. Sheriff Seth Bullock. A reply is currently being drafted. Sheriff Bullock is not a UIU agent and has not been fully informed of our anomalous nature. His naming our agent in telegram does constitute its own complication. The death of Agent 1 and the arrest of Agent 2 is a significant complication as well, though neither are intractable. An additional supervisory agent has been dispatched with haste to Deadwood Number 10 Saloon to oversee the oddity's protection.